Robots exist to do our vile biddings. I mean, that's why we created them. So in this episode, we're gonna go through six through 10 on our list of top 10 dirty robot jobs. Now this robot kind of looks like a cow's butt, chiefly because it exists solely to simulate the anatomy of a cow's rectum. Invented by veterinarian and computer scientist Sarah Bailey of Bristol University's veterinary school, the haptic cow is a high-tech teaching instrument. See, in order to diagnose pregnancy or any number of infections, you're gonna have to reach into the cow's rear, get right up in there, and palpate the animal's ovary, stomach, and uterus. As you might imagine, however, it's rather dark and cramped inside of a cow, so so veterinary schools have always faced a challenge in teaching proper palpation. The haptic cow uses touch feedback technology to simulate the internal organs of a female cow. So students can now feel inside of the faux farm animal, they can check their hand position on a computer screen, and overall hone their skills at bovine rectal examination. Now most sperm donors manage to produce their specimens via good old-fashioned manual stimulation. But if that doesn't work for you, there's always the sperm collector robot from China's Sanwei Medical Group. This lovely pink and white robot is designed for quote semen collection and premature ejaculation desensitization training and uh, carries out both tasks via a throbbing quote sperm collection G barrel. The patient merely inserts his penis into the machine which simulates the human vagina while providing sexually arousing sights and sounds on a built-in LCD screen. The resulting ejaculate then flows into a semen collection sheath. This uh, robot debuted at China's International Medical Equipment Fair in Shenzhen back in 2011 but it hasn't quite taken the world by storm just yet. Give it time. Meet Groundhog, Cave Crawler, and Gemini Scout. Sure, they may look like souped up mud cake four wheelers, but these bad boys are certified mine explorers. See, mines, especially abandoned mines, are dangerous and dirty places. They're prone to cave ins and bursts of searing poisonous gases. So we've got to get a robot in there. Groundhog is the eldest of the trio, developed by Carnegie Mellon University's Robotics Institute to navigate unmapped mines with lasers. The same researchers followed up on this success in 2007 with Cave Crawler, a smaller unit capable of autonomously exploring subterranean depths and testing for dangerous gases without a single tether back to the surface world. Then in 2011, Sandia National Labs unveiled Gemini Scout, which could navigate sand pits, rubble piles, 450 degree climbs, and depths of up to 18 inches of water all in a lightless mine. Armored casings protect its electronics from explosions and prevents its circuitry from igniting flammable gases. It even carries food and oxygen tanks to take to potentially trapped miners. Meet the ghoulish Vertobot. She performs virtual autopsies at Switzerland's University of Bern's Institute of Forensic Medicine, as well as the United States Dover Air Force Base. What does virtual autopsy mean? Why, it means Vertobot leaves the bone saws and cadaver shears to the humans, relying instead on stereo cameras and a computerized tomography scanner. She records a corpse's external conditions with the cameras and maps its insides with that CT scanner. The result? A complete 3D computer model of the deceased. And now there's even a Verobot 2.0. The last Mike robot on our list really has a bum rap. Now, when the Cyclone Power Technologies and Robotic Technologies Incorporated first announced its Energetically Autonomous Tactical Robot, or EATER, project back in 2009, the media had a field day with it. Headlines full of corpse-munching battlefield robots spread across the internet, despite the fact that EATER is actually a vegetarian. Despite this nasty reputation, uh, this bot essentially mimics the fuel system of a common donkey. It eats grass. It transforms that grass into energy. Only instead of digesting biomass, Eater burns it in a combustion chamber to generate power for its rugged wheels and vegetation shredding limbs. But who knows what the future will bring, right? I mean, some Japanese mortuaries depend on robotic systems to store and retrieve urns for visiting family members. Robots like Vertobot already assist in our mortuary duties, and while biomass consuming robots are still a developing technology, the idea of corpse-based energy is nothing new. In 2011, Britain's Durham Crematorium even announced plans to install turbines in its burners to generate energy. So what do you think about a possible future full of sperm collecting robots and corpse-based energy? Let me know, I'd love to hear from you. You can leave a comment below and be sure to hit that subscribe button so I can keep these videos rolling at you.